Hello, and let's finish, well, continue at least, our discussion of induction motors. Remember that an induction motor is a motor that receives AC power, and instead of having a brushed connection to the rotor to make poles through an electromagnet, or having a permanent magnet, like we see right over here on the left, yeah, like we have in the synchronous motor. But either way, uh, the induction motor avoids any of that special stuff and just has a so-called squirrel cage of conductor wrapped around a bunch of laminated ferromagnetic core material. And that allows it to induce current on the rotor and cause a torque on the rotor and produce useful mechanical energy. So we look like, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit, a little bit of background noise there. Um, so what we're going to look at today is why it is that an induction motor can do this. I've said that it can, but I haven't really explained why. So first, let's remember what we're dealing with when we talk about a synchronous motor. And that's when we have an, either an electromagnet that we have to have a brushed connection to to get power to, or a permanent magnet like we do in our little cartoon motor here. And this magnet rotates once around for every rotation or cycle of the AC power being fed in. So this one goes around once as the cycle goes through one complete cycle of the voltage that it supplies to the electromagnets and thus the current that it supplies to the electromagnets. The speed of a synchronous motor, whether it's this one or whether it's a more complicated one with more electromagnets or more phases of power being fed to it, is given by this equation. So the sync speed, so the synchronous speed, in other words, the speed at which the magnetic field rotates around the stator. Okay, so first maybe going this direction, and then it weakens, and then it's going this direction, and then it weakens, and then it's going that direction again, and then it weakens, and then it's going that direction again, back and forth and back and forth. So it's essentially rotating. Easier to see on like a four pole magnet. If you're wondering what that looks like, remember uh, two videos ago, uh, we had an example of that. So take a look at that. But the sync speed is the same as the speed at which the magnetic field rotates around the stator. And that's dependent on the current being fed to those electromagnets by the AC source. Now over here on the right, we've got uh, 120, so that's 120 seconds. This, F, we've seen that before, that's the frequency. And down here, poles divided by phases. So in other words, poles per phase. So in other words, how, in, in another set of words, how many poles there are per phase of AC power being sent in. Okay, so for this magnet, we have two poles that are close, you know, next to the, the rotor, and so that would be two, and we're only feeding in a single AC source, no fancy splitting of the phase by a capacitor or having some sort of three-phase generator, nothing like that, so it's just one phase. And so if we were to assume that the frequency is equal to what it usually is, uh, in at least the United States, which is 60 hertz, well, then we have 120 times 60 divided by 2. And if you work out the math on that, you get uh, 3,600, 7,200 divided by 2, so 3,600 RPM, if I'm doing that math correctly in my head. Okay, so 3,600 revolutions per minute RPM. Great. So if we put in our frequency and our poles and our phases, 
correctly, then for any synchronous motor, for any motor, AC motor, then we can figure out what the speed of rotation of the magnetic field is around the stator, and thus we know what the synchronous speed it would be. So in other words, the rotor speed of a synchronous motor. Now, <clears throat> when you're talking about when you're talking about induction motors, things get a little bit different, but let's do one more example before we get there. And then we have something like this, where we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve poles next to our permanent magnet rotor. Okay, so if we're looking at this equation again, we have 12 poles, we have one, two, three phases color-coded in this diagram, so that's three, so 12 divided by three in the denominator, four, and then again if we take frequency to be equal to 60 hertz, then 7200 goes in the numerator, so 60 times 120, because 60 times 60 is 3600, and then times 2 is 7200. You divide that by 4, and you get 1800 RPM. So for this one, the uh, synchronous speed mouse uh, is 1800 RPM revolutions per minute. Okay, so depending on the frequency that you're feeding to your AC motor, and depending on the number of poles that you constructed in your AC motor, and the number of phases that you're feeding into your AC motor, you know what the synchronous speed is. So for a synchronous motor, the rotor speed matches the speed of rotation of the magnetic field around the stator. And in an induction motor, as it turns out, the speed of the rotor has to slip behind the synchronous speed, the speed of rotation of the magnetic field around the stator. So let's take a look at that. So here we have our little cartoon of an induction motor, single phase and all that. You don't see this very often. Typically, induction motors are three phase, though not always. And as it says here, right, if the rotor was turning exactly in sync with the field, so just the same as the synchronous motor with the permanent magnet of the rotor here on the left, well then, there wouldn't be a changing magnetic flux. So in other words, a changing number of magnetic field lines through any of these loops that we have on the rotor. Remember that squirrel cage has all these little loops because all of these bars are connected by a conductor. And then, so within each one of these loops, if this thing was turning exactly at the same speed that the magnetic field on the stator was rotating around the stator, well then there'd never be any change in the number of field lines that are going through any of the loops on the squirrel cage. And if you don't have a changing magnetic flux, a changing number of magnetic field lines, we know from Faraday's law that no voltage difference would be induced, and that means no current would be going through any of these bars. If that's the case, if there's no current, then we're not going to get any torque because there won't be any Lorentz force. If you have a current in the magnetic field from the stator, then you expect a Lorentz force, and that would cause the rotation of this thing, and have torque on the rotor, and all these good things that we want for our motor. But that wouldn't happen if the rotor exactly followed the rotation speed of the magnetic field. So what we say is that Induction motors are asynchronous, so not synchronous, and they experience slip. So slip can be expressed a number of different ways, either as RPM, like a number of RPM behind the rotation of the magnetic field around the stator, in other words, the sync or synchronous speed, uh, or you can represent it as a percentage of the synchronous speed, a lot of different ways to do it. 
But the, the takeaway message for induction motors, I've put it in a blue box, but let me put it in a purple box, is that the speed of the rotor in an induction motor, so specifically here, so let me draw a line here between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this diagram. If you're talking about an induction motor, the speed of the rotor must be less than the synchronous speed. In other words, the speed of the rotor must be less than the speed of the rotation of the magnetic field around the stator, which is dictated by how much power we're getting from the AC source. All right, so next time we'll talk about, in a little more detail, why that must be the case. We'll take this more complicated uh, squirrel cage rotor here, and we'll reduce it down to just a single loop of conductor and see how it is that if it matches the synchronous speed, there's no change in the number of field lines going through it. And that should give you an intuition about why it is that we need this difference between the speed of the rotor and the speed of the rotation of the magnetic field in an induction motor. So thank you for your attention and I will see you on the next one.